Welcome, friends, to Plymouth Church, United Church of Christ. I am the Reverend Dr. Kelly Brown. I am the senior pastor here at this church, and we welcome each and every one of you. Welcome to this progressive Christian church, meaning that no matter who you are, no matter what you believe, or even if you do not believe, you are most welcomed here. If there is family that has not yet viewed Jarrell, you are invited in these few moments to do so. Otherwise, I will invite the funeral home to close the casket at this time. Friends, we are gathered here on this sad occasion to honor and to celebrate the life of Jarrell Ward, husband and brother and father and son and friend and businessman known and loved by each of you. And friends, beloved ones, we come today to honor the blessing of having known and been known by him. I was not blessed to know him, but he seems to have been an exquisitely remarkable, wise, intelligent person. And we are here to aid in completing his journey for the sake of the family and those who loved him as he returns to stardust. As we sit together in the thickness of this embrace of grief, 
I invite you to linger for a time in this great and unfortunate and untimely loss to the family and to the world. And as a pastor, I invite you to let go of the things that many people will say, like God needed him. No, God didn't. It is not the truth. This is not something that needed to happen because God already had him, amen. And so I invite the family to resist the things that people say with kind hearts and good intentions, but things that are actually harmful to you while you are grieving. And I invite you to go ahead and cry, whether you are a man or a woman or a person of any identity, because we don't need any toxicity today. Today, we invite you to cry because you are human and you are missing Jarrell. I invite you to go ahead and mourn this good man. And I say to you to linger, but do not live here too long. For each of you carry his strength and you carry his handsome face and you carry his gifts and with courage, you can hold in your heart all of the memories of his life. May God grant you grace in these moments and that in pain, we may find comfort and in sorrow, hope and in death, resurrection. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you that even on this sad day that we believe you journey with us and hear our prayers even when we don't know what to say. So give to us right now your grace that as we shrink before the mystery of death, as we hold in our hearts the questions of why did this have to happen, may we witness your healing even now in this moment. Help us to live as the ones who live in hope even when all seems hopeless and when our days are yet accomplished. Enable us to find your sure embrace, for we know that Jarrell is in your arms. Amen. Let us sing together the hymn, Blessed Assurance. Amen. Let us return now to the call to worship. I invite you to say the words in your bulletin that are dark, and I will say the words that are not. Let us call on our God, who hears and answers us, 
Let us call on God in our moment of need as we grieve our beloved gone too soon. Let us seek the strength that comes from the Spirit who grieves with us, who feels our pain when we are alone. The Spirit is gentle and searches our hearts to see just where to pour love and healing. Though we may not feel God's embrace today, we must know that nothing can separate us from God's love. Nothing, not even death. With faith, we give thanks to you, O oh God, for the life of Jarrell Ward. Amen. I invite now Leela to come. Okay. Sorry, I just need one second. Today, I stand before you, not just as myself, but as a voice for all of those lives that were touched, brightened, and forever changed by Jarrell. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Tia, and I was not, and Jarrell was not only my friend, he was a beacon of life in the lives of everyone he encountered. Jarrell was 38 years old, but in his time here, he carved a legacy so vibrant, so full of love and strength, that it feels almost impossible to encapsulate his essence in mere words. Jarrell lived his life full of generosity, with a strength that inspired and a spirit that never seemed to know bounds. To talk about Jarrell is to talk about joy, laughter, and a ceaseless, a ceaseless cascade of love that touched everyone he met. Jarrell had this incredible quality about him that made everyone feel embraced, cherished, and instantly part of his world, regardless of their background or how their paths crossed. Let me paint you a picture of the man we all adored. Imagine someone who would shift from being the epitome of professionalism to in the next heartbeat, declaring his undying love for his wife, Leela, encouraging her to twerk, <laughs> and celebrating life with the same in intensity that he did. That was Jarrell. He was a beacon of acceptance, his cheerful personality, making you feel loved, and seen from the moment you entered his orbit. I can personally attest to this. After many, many years of knowing him, just through online, because I lived in other states through my friendship with Leela, my, my in-person introduction to Jarrell felt like a reunion with a lifelong friend. He enveloped me in a hug that seemed to erase any distance that had lay between us. Jarrell had this magical ability to, to light up a room and make your day brighter and leave you feeling significantly, significantly better about life. Jarrell was an unparalleled husband and father, living his life as a testament to unconditional love. His love for his family wasn't just an emotional, but it was vivid and a palpable force that was demonstrated loudly and proudly. He invested every moment in making sure that Delila and his children felt not just cared for, but truly adored in a manner that felt that few had have had the fortunate um, experience in life. Jarrell's dedication to his family was his passion. It was his guidance, his, it would, it was his guiding principle. If Leela so much as hinted at sadness, Jarrell was there with a gift, a hug, ice cream, or a spontaneous shopping trip. Anything to bring a smile to her face. Their journey together spanning 18 years was marked by laughter, constant irritations, and a soul deep love that serves as an inspiration to all of us fortunate to have witnessed it. Jarrell's ability to love loud and without restraint or reservation teaches us the invaluable lesson to express our love freely and fearlessly. One of my last interactions with Jarrell was in the hospital as he faced the twilight of his life. 
His thoughts were not for himself, but for Delilah and their children. He sought assurance that they would be taken care of and loved. I promised him that day that they would never be alone, that his family would always be my family. This promise was not made lightly. Sorry, one moment. I can't see my words. It was not made lightly. It is a commitment to honor Jarrell's memory by ensuring his loved ones continue to feel the boundless love that he had for them, to be there for Delilah at any hour, and to ensure his children grow surrounded by love and cherished memory of their father. Today, as we reflect on Jarrell's life and the incredible mark that he's left on each of us, let's honor his memory by embracing his ethos, to love loudly, without hesitation, to cherish our loved ones, without reservations, and to, love, to live each day with the joy and generosity that define Jarrell's life. Jarrell, have, Jarrell may have departed from this world, but his spirit, his laughter, and his extraordinary love remain with us forever. Jarrell, my friend, we will miss you immensely. But we take solace in knowing that your legacy and love and kindness will continue to inspire us all. Rest in peace knowing your family is loved, your memory is cherished, and your life celebrated. Thank you. Though we are saddened by this loss, we take comfort in knowing that Jarrell lived a life full of many good memories, so much joy and happiness. The husband and father that Jarrell was is a shining example to us all. Though Jarrell is no longer with us, his spirit lives on in the memories we carry and the lives he touched. Let us honor Jarrell today and forever. This is Jarrell's legacy and it will endure in our hearts forever. We love you, Jarrell. We miss you deeply until we meet again. Rest in peace. Hear now the scripture, Romans chapter eight, selected verses. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, then who is against us? The inscrutable one who did not withhold God's own son, but gave him up for all of us. How will this one not give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. No, in all things we are more than victorious through the Holy One who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God's word for the people of God, amen. We will now have the two others who will come for remembrances. Hello, I'm Jarell's cousin, my name is Dorea. 
There's a lot of good things you could say about Jarrell, but one thing about him is he was a good businessman and loved his family so much. Jarrell was the cousin you see in every blue moon, but every time he would come around, he would just crack jokes and just smile. I remember when my sister died, we had a talk, and he said, no matter what life throws at you, cousin, you gotta be strong, keep going for the ones that you love. And that's exactly what I've been doing. You will be missed, my dear cousin. You fought so hard through all the challenges you were facing and didn't deserve. I love you, cousin. You will forever be missed. Hug Rayshana and everyone up there for me. May you rest in peace. Y'all forgive me, because I had to take my heels off, all right? <laughs> this is a special tribute in memory of my cousin, Mr. Jarrell Jer Ward, and a special, special tribute to his wife and the kids and to the family. It's called I Am Free. Ooh. Don't grieve for me, now I am free. I have followed the path God made for me. I took his hand when I heard his call. I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, love, work, or play. Tasks left undone must stay that way. I found peace on that day. If my passion had left a void, then fill it with remembering joy. A friendship, a hug, a laugh, or a kiss. Oh yes, these things too I will miss. Be not burdened with time of sorrow. I wish you the sunshine of tomorrow. My life has been full in favor much. Good friends, good times, my loved one touch. Perhaps my life seem all too brief. Don't lengthen it now with undue grief. Lift up your heart and share with me. God wanted me. He set me free. Yes. Hello, everybody. My name is Charlene Brooks. Um, Jarrell was my little cousin. His mom was my first cousin, Teresa. Just thank everybody for being here. It's so hard for to sit up here like this and even say anything to anybody. He was a great soul and he's gonna be truly missed. I love all you guys.
took your presence for granted But I always can And I miss the love we share And I know that you're shining down on me from heaven Like so many friends we lost alone From heaven, like so many friends we've lost along the way. And I know even truly we'll be together once we die. I spent weeks trying to think about how to start this eulogy. And in the end, the first thing that kept coming to mind was to start with how I met Jarrell. He hated for me to tell this story, but the truth is that we met in jail. Okay, wait, it's not what you think. We were both there visiting the same person, just by chance. You know when they say it was love at first sight? Well, this wasn't that. In fact, I spent the first several months of our friendship trying to convince him that he didn't like me. However, I did give him a ride home that afternoon, and I remember saying to myself, he's going to be mine. And as you can see, I always get what I want. It wasn't long before Jarell and I became a couple, and I fell so deeply in love with this man that it turned me into a crazy person. We can save those stories for later, but let me see a quick show of hands if you personally witnessed me going insane over this man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We had ups and downs just like every relationship, but then I got pregnant with Armani and my mom said, get married or cancel this pregnancy as if it were a dinner reservation. We looked at each other and said, wanna get married? And so we were married. Here we are 18 years later and it doesn't feel real that I'm speaking at his funeral. Jarrell was full of life. He was the life of the party, always down for any adventure, 
He was the fun dad, the cool dad, the most loving and protective dad. He was smart, brave, funny, handsome, kind. The list could go on forever. But what I loved about him the most was his devotion to his family. Jarrell had a very rough childhood. He grew up poor, stealing food just so he and his brothers could eat. He followed the worst path and made the worst decisions. As an adult, he wanted to be the best role model for his children and vowed to turn his life around, if not for anyone else, if not for any other reason but them, and he did. He worked himself to the bone to make sure he succeeded, and he did. He made a promise to himself to set the best model of a great father that he could be, and he did that. Not only did he take the mistakes of his past and harness those mistakes and use it as motivation to be better, every day be better, but he created the reality he dreamed of by using his children as motivation. He told me that if his kids never have to struggle the way he did, he could die happy. He laid the bricks one by one to ensure that was the case, so now I can't help but wonder, did he die happy? Unbeknownst to him, Jarrell inspired people wherever he went. Not only is his name now known worldwide and his story being shared all over the internet, but he also touched the hearts of so many people he knew personally. Jarrell could spark up a conversation with anyone, and if, it, if he wasn't well-versed on a particular topic, he would study about it on his own so that he could have those conversations with people and be educated about it. Also, he could connect with people. He easily built connections with people from all walks of life because he had great empathy. He wanted to understand others and connect with them, and it didn't matter on what level. He was a wonderful combination of humble and confident, and I can only hope to have an ounce of his integrity as I go forth without him. As a child, Jarrell wanted to be a rapper or a professional basketball player. He was great at basketball and was so proud of Armani for wanting to follow in his footsteps. He loved his basketball, he loved his music, but even more than that, he loved making people happy. Oftentimes we would go pass out money, food, supplies to the homeless people because he loved to make people's day. If I was sad or having a bad day, he would absolutely stop at nothing to make me happy. If I was upset with the kids or they got in trouble, he would come to their rescue and take them out to do fun things just to see them smile again. Lana, being our only daughter, was the apple of his eye. While he was fighting cancer, she would frequently eat dinner on the couch so she could be close to him. She didn't like the idea of him ever eating dinner alone in the hospital bed. She didn't want him to feel left out while the rest of us ate dinner at the table. She slept next to him countless nights and even put pictures of him all over her bedroom door, in her school folder, in her backpack, everywhere. They had a beautiful bond and he was so proud of how smart and beautiful she is, but he made mention of her genuine kindness almost every day. Roman, he used to say, was his old Italian man-child. He could laugh with that kid for hours, truly. They have the same exact goofy personality, and on his deathbed, he couldn't hold back tears while telling me how unfair it is that he won't be here to see such a cool kid grow up. Last but not least, Armani. Armani was his pride and joy. Jarrell raised Armani pretty much on his own for years, during a time where I was working hard to grow our business, often working 18-hour days. As a team, we both made sacrifices for our family in order to build a solid foundation for our future. Jarrell went through some very formative years while raising Armani, and as much as he taught Armani, Armani taught him. Armani's a great kid, perfect manners, straight A student, never gets in trouble. There's no doubt in my mind that we didn't just get lucky with him. His demeanor and behavior is a result of the perfect job Jarrell did raising him. Armani is the product of being raised by an active, present father who loved him with all his heart. The hardest goodbye of all was to Armani. I'm sad, <clears throat> so very sad. Actually, sad is not the word, but I don't think there is a word that can describe the sorrow that I feel. But I had everything I wanted with Jarrell. <laughs> In my early 20s, any time I would see the first star in the sky, I'd say out loud, starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. Wish I may, wish I might, make my wish come true tonight. And every time he would ask me what I wished for, and I'd say, I can't tell you because then it won't come true. So desperate was I to make that wish come true that I must have wished on a thousand stars. Each and every time the wish was the same. I wish for us to stay together forever. I guess in a way my wish came true, just not in the way I had hoped. 
Jarrell was the love of my life. We shared a love that people searched to find their entire lives. I know this, and I'm eternally grateful to have been loved by him. But as Taylor Swift said, the greatest loves of all time is over now. His life was stolen from him. His opportunity to fight was stolen from him. And now here we are, mourning the death of a man who joined communities together, who broke down barriers with his kindness, mourning the death of Jarrell, albeit together, just as he would have wanted, but nonetheless, a death that shouldn't have been. Jarrell showed courage under the unthinkable circumstances. Finding out he had cancers was one of the worst days of my life. But we locked arms and walked into the fire together. Whatever the outcome, we would fight the fight together, and we did. I never left his side from the day of diagnosis until his heart beat for the last time. And during this journey, I was reminded over and over again why I fell in love with him in the first place. We cried together, we laughed together, we faced fear that you could feel in your bones together. We rode the ride of life until the wheels fell off, till death did we part. Until we meet again, my love, I will forever miss you, forever be thinking of you, and forever fighting to keep your name alive. Thank you, dear Leela, and for all the ones who came with remembrances. If briefly, I will share for a moment. Because the memorials, the funerals, they're absolutely to send our beloved ones on their way. But it's also for those of us, the living, so that we can make sense of what we are doing together. Friends, I must admit to you today that I doom scroll. And if you don't know what that is, it means that I am never very far from my cell phone and that I'm usually scrolling through Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook. There aren't many moments in my day outside of work that I'm not connected. And I use social media to just make the time go by. And so as I was thinking about my own personal grief, I happened across this gentleman who was holding his daughter on his body. He was laying in a hospital bed. And I was drawn to the story. And I realized that it was this man's final moments. And I watched him hugging his children and I watched him saying goodbye. I even watched a hospice nurse who stitched herself to the video and wanted to say blessings to this strong wife who did a service for all of us by recording this gentleman's final moments. And she encouraged that this is what we should do to give the family time to say goodbye and to honor the life of the one you love while they are still with you. And of course, as you may have guessed, it was Jarrell and it was Leela's video that has gone viral. And in my midnight hour, I was drawn to tears, blessed to have seen it as I was sitting there. And because of how I believe the spirit works, the church around the same time received a request to, to have a funeral here. And I had no idea that the spirit was bringing everything together. I am so sorry that I did not know Jarrell and I'm glad that you did 
I took some time to look through a few videos and to watch him so full of life, to watch him laughing, to watch him moving on the videos where the music due to copyright had been taken away. But I am grateful to say in these moments that I have a rare opportunity to speak to his life. I chose today's scripture, interestingly, from Romans. And I chose it because I wanted to tell you that whether you go to church or not, whether you believe in God or whatever you call it, higher power, I just wanted to say to you that God does not punish. People do. People get things wrong. People make decisions that we would rather not happen, but God doesn't do that. God does not zap anyone because I declare I would not be before you. God doesn't give people heartbreaking circumstances because they are a strong soldier or that they stand on business. God doesn't do that. God is not trivial and God is not mean because God loves us. And the scriptures say, and my experience say, that there is nothing that can separate you or me from the love of God. Not death, not life, not angels, not demons, not those in control, not folks hiding behind expensive lawyers, not anyone, not what has happened, not things that are coming, not anything else will separate Jarrell or any one of you from God's love. And there is nothing that can make you less divine because you are made in the image of God. I don't care what you look like. When you look in the mirror, you are seeing the face of God. And there is nothing that can destroy that. There's nothing that can destroy the 18 beautiful years even if you did have your challenges. They were 18 beautiful years of loving Jarrell. And there's nothing that can take that away from you. The children stand here as witness. And each of you babies, you hold your father's spirit in you so that when you need him, you need to recall the memories of how it felt to hug him, how it felt to hear his voice how it felt to laugh. And you need to remember that though his body is not here, he is here, right here and now. And there will be times, and I declare because I've lost my own folk, that you will walk by and smell his cologne and say, Jarrell, there will be times, children, where you will look in the mirror and think you look just like your father. There will be time, brothers, where you see him in yourself. You will see it in nature, for often birds or butterflies will visit to let you know that Jarrell is close by. Leela shared with me what others have said about their relationship, that it was a once in a lifetime kind of love and I go on to say that that kind of love is what makes us whole. It's the kind that makes a whole life that you are building together and lifting and growing together where you know you have his back and he has yours. And sometimes you think a knee injury is all that it is and you find out that it is so much more. And then there is a life-altering loss that you never imagined, and things change far too quickly. But today, friends, I want to say that here lies Jarrell's covering, the place where his spirit lived. Because his spirit is still here, and he is still proud of his children and of his wife and of his accomplishments. He's still smiling, he's still 
playing basketball, he's still dancing, he's still cutting up and telling jokes. So I invite you to grieve and to cry. I invite you to be angry and don't tell, let anyone tell you otherwise, amen. And I invite you to live a good and big life and live as he did and be courageous and take, take your time to live and to enjoy every moment. Pursue your dreams and laugh deeply. Take up space and dream. Be a light in the world and do not shrink or grow small for anyone. For as Alice Walker says, never walk by the color purple because it pisses God off. When you walk by the color purple without honoring its existence, we honor you today, Jarrell. We say your name. So no matter if you're a believer or not, please know that we are a resurrection people, that death never has the final word. Science has discovered, in fact, that when you die, the essence of us is released back into the universe. And it returns, guess what, Leela, to the stars. Science has figured out that we are made of the same stuff of the universe. Starlight, star bright. That is what our bodies say when we die. And though it is unjust that he is gone, and though it is unfair that he is not with us, and I know in my heart of hearts that justice will prevail, but death is just a part of life. So when it is your time, do not be afraid because we do not leave, dear friends. We simply change form and we become a star ourselves. We become love. So friends, I hope that you will hold each other tight. I hope that you will love each other. I hope that you will stand in the gap for Jarrell and what Jarrell would do for Leela and the children and that you will take it upon yourselves to do those things. And I invite for us to celebrate for as long as we are breathing to honor Jarrell's life. Thank the Holy One and be blessed enough to know that you were blessed to know him. And his life is a lesson to each of us and, to, and an invitation to all of us. For though we do not live forever, yes we do, just among the stars. So I invite you to be generous with your life and your time and your gifts and to build the world that is fit for Jarrell and his wife and children and family. Build a world that is fit for us all. And I invite you to know that we belong to one another and we are simply walking each other home. Amen. Hear now the commendation. Into your hands, Holy One, we commend your beloved son, Jarrell Ward. Acknowledge his life and his spirit as we humbly release one of your own fold, an indelibly important part to your family, to this cloud of loved ones, to the city and to the world. Receive him into your arms of mercy, holy God, into the blessed and joyful rest and everlasting peace. May his spirit and his memory always be a blessing, earth to earth and stardust to stardust. Amen.
If anybody asks you where I am going, where I am going soon, I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord. Oh, I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord. See take the pain, the heartache it brings, there's comfort in knowing I soon will be gone, as God gives me grace. Amen. I invite now for the funeral director to come. Is the funeral director available?